This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Since we've had a chance to discuss polygon surfaces in some detail and discuss their components, we can now try to create a polygon model. In fact, in this video, we're going to build a banana starting with a polygon cube and applying a couple tools that are used quite often for polygon models. One is called Extrude, and the other tool is called Smooth. Between those tools and simply moving around the vertices, we can create a banana. So let's just get started. So I'm going to go to Create, Polygon Primitives, Cube. We'll make a cube, and there it is. It only has one face per side. That's OK for now. So we can go straight to Extrusion. And the way Extrusion works is you select one or more faces and apply the Extrude tool. So I'm going to pick one face on one side. So I'm going to right mouse button, go to Face, and then select this face on the end. Now it's selected, I can go up to Edit Mesh. Now I need to make sure I'm on the Polygons menu set, which I am. In any case, Edit Mesh. And the second item in that drop down menu is Extrude. So Extrude. Click that. And what you get is a special handle. This is the extrusion handle. And it comes in two parts. You have a transform handle that appears where that face is. Then you have several sliders. The sliders are relatively new to Maya. It's a nice feature, though. Let's start with the sliders. It's kind of a quick way to make your extrusion, because right now there's no extrusion. At least there's none you can see. So we'll start with thickness, which is the top slider. So as I click drag that, the extrusion extrudes outwards. There's your extrusion. And what is happening when you extrude is the face or faces you have selected are pulled outwards in the direction that you determine. What happens in the gap is you get brand new faces. In other words, that edge that was along the face you had selected is broken. So now you have two sets of edges, one here, and then you get new faces in between. In any case, that's a thickness slider. I can pull this out as far as I want using that slider. I'm going to dolly out here so we can see better. The second slider is Offset, and Offset is a scaling tool. So what it does is it scales that face you originally had selected, or multiple faces if you have more than one selected. So I'll make that face and end a little bit smaller. And the last slider is really handy, which is called Divisions. That creates additional divisions along that new area of the extrusion. Otherwise, if you did not use that division slider, you'd have to insert those by hand. So this is a great time saver. So by sliding this, I can insert additional divisions there. Now, you don't have to use the sliders. You can also grab the transform handle directly. In fact, I'm going to click off this and then click Undo to undo my extrusion, and we'll retry it with just that handle. So now I'm back to my original extrusion state. What I can do is dolly in and grab this handle directly. If I grab the x-axis handle, I can pull it out and make it long, just like the slider. I can move the handles in any direction I want to. If I want to give this a bend, for instance, I can drag it in the Y direction. I can also scale. You notice that the handle has little scale boxes on it also. If I click drag the Y, for instance, that scales in the Y direction, or the X. As soon as you click one of these scale handles, you get the blue handle in the center, where you can scale in all three directions. There's also a rotation circle. If you click on that rotation circle, you get the proper rotation handle. So now I can rotate that end face to make it go any direction I want. And one thing I can't really do with this handle is add divisions. So the division slider is quite handy. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the division slider and put more divisions in. So let's say that's one half our banana. It's in a very simple state now, but we'll refine it as we go. So I'm going to click off this now to freeze the extrusion. Now I'm going to go to the opposite side, pick the opposite face, and do the same thing. Go up to Edit Mesh, Extrude. I'm going to pull that handle out. I'm going to scale it. I'm going to grab the little blue handle in the center to scale that end down. And then I'm going to grab the division slider to add more divisions. And that's our basic starting shape. I'm going to click off that. Now this is a good point to transform some vertices. I'm going to go to the side view, maximize that, and we'll try to Tweak this into more of a banana-like profile, at least so it looks more like a banana from the side. So I'm going to go to my right mouse menu, go to Vertex, 
what I could do is select columns of vertices. In other words, I can click drag a box over a whole column of vertices so they become selected and then scale those. Now scale is a group, so what I can do is just continue to select different columns of vertices and scale them. As you see, as I skip from one selection to the other, my remember is that I have the selection tool or that I was using the selection tool and it keeps coming up. That's really great because so I can continue to select and just scale a new selection and that way the uh, modeling goes very, very fast. So as you see, as I scale these up and down, I can get more of a curvy shape to my profile. Another thing I can do is select the column of vertices and transform them, or I should say just move them. So I can go from selection to selection and move them to spread them out, maybe in a more even fashion or to help with my curvature. Maybe the end is too far out, so I'll pull that in. And so I can just skip back and forth. Now, if I use my hotkeys for my transform tools, which are W for move, E for rotate, and R for scale, and then continue to select different sets, I can work pretty fast. I can really start to tweak this shape really rapidly when I'm using my keyboard keys. After a while, you get used to this, and you'll find the modeling goes pretty quickly. So moving the vertices around is a great way to give shape to something that might otherwise be really too square. I can even do something like grab the whole set of end vertices and rotate. Jump to my Rotate tool, jump to my Move tool, select the other end, rotate, jump to my Move tool, and continue to just manipulate these. And slowly but surely, it's becoming a banana shape. Now initially you might find that you're not working quite as fast as me, but you'll see that with a little bit of practice, it becomes quite easy. Now one thing to note is, I'm only working from the side view now. If I go back to perspective, you'll see that I am affecting both sides. Because remember that as you make selections from the camera view, you're selecting from the back to the front. So if I go back to the side and say pick the center column of vertices, I'm actually selecting through the back, so I get an entire square of vertices. I'll turn this back to wireframe so you can see that. So in other words, I'm selecting not only the front two vertices here, but the ones that correspond on the back side. Now from this angle, if I go back to shaded view, we'll see that the banana is still kind of square. I bent it in such a way that at least I do get a banana-like profile. But it still has a boxy shape. I mean, you could tell it's based on a square. Now before I smooth it, which is something you can do in this situation, I'm going to go to the top view. I'm going to go and to minimize this and go to the top view. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time tweaking the shape here also. And I'll use the same trick. I'll select groups of vertices. I'll use my keyboard shortcuts to go to my transform tools and then shape sets of them or move sets of these vertices until I get some nice taper to the banana. So what I'm trying to avoid is anything that looks overly square as best I can. So you can see right now, looking from the top view, at least I have a decent curvature here and here. I go back to my side view, have a decent curvature here and down here. Now we'll have to deal with the boxiness by applying a different tool. Now I'm back to the perspective view here. At this point, what we can do is go to the Smooth tool, which is another common tool that's used for polygon modeling. And what Smooth does is it subdivides all the faces, but also moves the additional vertices to try to make the surface more curvy. So get you out of that box-like shape. So I'm going to select this banana as a object, then go up to Mesh. And there's a Smooth tool. And we're just going to apply it with the default settings, and then we'll talk about how it works. So I'm going to click Smooth, and it's Smooth. In fact, it works pretty well. When you select it as an object, what you can see is that it's broken all those old faces into additional faces. And instead of leaving the shape as a square, it's bent in the vertices along those new faces. In other words, instead of having a square profile, some of the vertices are moved inwards, like this. So that's how you get a more curvy shape to the banana. So again, all I have to do is pick that object, go to Mesh, and apply Smooth. Now Smooth has some disadvantages. Obviously, you're subdividing the model. So if your model is already fairly dense in terms of the number of faces, 
applying smooth is going to make a very, very heavy model. Now, our disadvantage of smooth is it's not going to take away all the boxiness. In other words, as you can see by this demo, I had to spend some time in the side view manipulating the shape of the primitive extrusion and then spending some time in the top view to try to, you know, add more curviness to it. So in other words, you can't just apply a cube and hope you're going to get a really nice shape out of it. You have to spend a little bit of time moving vertices around as best you can to add as much curvature as you possibly can before you apply the smooth. Once you've done a little bit of groundwork and you apply smooth, it actually helps out quite a bit. So there's your banana-like banana. Now at this point, of course, you're still free to add additional transformations. You can move the vertices. You can move the model. Do whatever you want at this point. It's simply a tool that gets applied and it updates the polygon. Now, because we have construction history on, all the steps we've taken so far are construction history. But when you're finished with the model, you can always delete that construction history and get rid of it so you don't have that heaviness of the model. In other words, you don't have all those history steps left over. Again, the way to get rid of history would be to go up to Edit, Delete by Type, History. Now, in this case, you don't really want to go to the hypergraph or the outliner and try to find your history nodes because I have so many steps that I've applied that doing the history right here is much better. Now, you can see all your steps if you pick the object and go over here where you see Inputs. Those are your various steps. Now, some of the steps are combined. For instance, every time I move a vertice, that's just simply listed as poly tweak. But here's your basic history right here. So again, if I want to get rid of the history and freeze that model, I'll go up to Edit, Delete by Type, History.